Hey, welcome back. Today we're covering something that's really close to my heart, night photography. To me, the nighttime has always been more evocative and more interesting. The light, the colours, the mood. I'm not the only person that thinks that. Even Vincent van Gogh thought that the nighttime carried a special something. Ever since I bought my first camera all those years ago, the first thing I wanted to do was get out there and take photographs at night. Little did I know then that I was following in a, in a long line of photographers going back all the way to the 1800s. So let's talk about it. Let me take you back. People have been trying for years, unsuccessfully, to capture images on photosensitive media, but they were finding that despite their best efforts, these images would fade and degrade, and they couldn't create anything that lasted permanently. It wasn't until 1826 that French photographer Joseph Niepce finally cracked it and captured the first permanent photograph. This was the culmination of many years of experimenting using his heliography or sun writing technique. Niepce used a modified camera obscura design with the addition of a light sensitive plate at the rear of the camera body. This plate was coated in a bitumen based solution which is what he used to capture that first photograph. He needed an exposure time of eight hours to capture this photograph and that was in daylight hours. The next step forward took another 10 years or so when Louis-Jacques Monde Daguerre brought forward his daguerreotype process in 1839. Daguerre was responsible for taking what was thought to be the first ever photograph of a human the year before. His process relied on a polished silver plate exposed to various fumes to develop its light sensitivity and then placing this in a camera. It was still not a very light sensitive technique though, with an exposure requiring more than 10 minutes, even in bright sunshine. So it was still not quite ready to be of much use in night photography. In the 1870s, Richard Leach Maddox, a British physician and photographer, invented the gelatine dry plate process, which was the next step forward in photographic techniques at that time. Maddox used gelatin mixed with light sensitive chemicals, plated out onto a glass plate and that was placed in the back of the camera. This technique was refined and developed over the coming years and was used by one of the most significant early night photographers, Paul Martin, in the 1890s. Paul Martin famously created a series of images called London by Gaslight in the 1890s. These images had a real influence on other photographers, including Alfred Stieglitz, Stieglitz, Stieglitz? who was a prominent photographer and gallerist in the United States, operating at around the same time. Now regarded as a pioneer of modern photography, Stieglitz was influenced by Martin's work and he became increasingly influential in the next 10 to 20 years in the USA. He was a gallery owner, publisher and writer and he had a significant role in promoting the idea that photography was more than just a technical practice and actually should be considered as an art form. Stieglitz created night photographs in New York in the late 1890s through to the first uh, two decades in the 20th century. Stieglitz also influenced other significant photographers through the Camera Club of New York, including people like Edward Steichen. These artists were pushing the boundary of the medium, medium at the time, creating a technique which they described as pictorialism, which was a sort of artistic rendering of photographic scenes. This approach to photography emphasized beauty and subjectivity rather than objective representation of a scene. Skipping ahead to the 1930s, Brassai created a seminal series of night images in Paris de Nuit. Drawing on his early experience as a painter, Brassai's work had an artistic and almost cinematic quality with a masterful use of light and shadow. Brassai moved in the same circles as people like Picasso, Matisse, Henry Miller, and made work that seemed to almost reveal the secrets of Paris nightlife, from romantic rendezvous to nocturnal pedestrians to what went on in the Paris nightclubs. Moving back from Paris to London, there was a contemporary of Brassai called Bill Brandt, whose work often seemed to echo Brassai's work. He had himself spent some time in Paris in his earlier years, and his initial forays into night photography were largely inspired by Brassai, even going so far as to restage some of Brassai's most famous images with his own unique twist. Here, Brandt posed his wife in the role of a streetwalker with a nod to the work of Brassai. Brandt published his book A Night in London in 1936, just three years after Paris de Nuit. Brandt also produced some striking images during bombing raids during the Second World War when London was in complete darkness. Through the Second World War and in the decade or so afterwards, a number of other photographers made quite notable contributions to night photography, including Margaret Bourke White. She created incredibly memorable photographs of the Moscow Knights during World War II. Jack Delano, gained notoriety for the work that he did for the US government documenting railroads. And O. Winston Link, in the, again in the 1950s, also documenting railways. 
As the world slowly shook off the effects of war in the 1950s and 60s, the next development in night photography was looming on the horizon. But to talk about that, we really need another video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to know what happened next. And if you're itching to get out and take some night photographs of your own, but don't know where to begin, you can check out this video here. And until next time, much love.